quatre séquences d'allumage lanceur. We're ready to go. We're going to cut away. You'll hear the DDO call out the final countdown. Enjoy the launch. Stop à 0 moins 20 secondes. Lagage du Mavic KM, allumage triétage à tous de DDO. Attention au décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, top décollage. Les paramètres bord sont normaux. Bon fonctionnement des moteurs du premier et deuxième étage. Stabilisation du lanceur sur les trois axes. Well, fine shots. Always impressive, no matter how many times you see Soyuz powering into the sky. 309 tons at liftoff. That's less than half the mass of Ariane 5. The boosters are the first stage. The boosters and the central core, or second stage, are burning now. Les paramètres bord sont conforme à l'attendu. As the DDO says, all is well on board. The boosters weigh 45 tons each at liftoff. Total mass of the first stage, 178 tons. Their engines running on liquid hydrogen, sorry, liquid oxygen and kerosene. The same propellants used in each of the three lower stages. The parameters propulsive sont conforme à l'attendu. The second or the core stage, similar to the boosters, its ignition occurred on the launch pad. As you saw, the stage will burn for four minutes. Remember, Soyuz weighed 309 tons at liftoff after separation of her boosters, which you may be able to see by the na uh, with the naked eye, but there's a, the onboard camera showing what it looks like. Separation des quatre propulseurs. At separation of her boosters, she's down to 135 tons. So in less than two minutes, she loses more than half her weight. On the bottom of your screen, on the left, our altitude. On the right, our speed. These figures coming in Les from the downrange stations. Galio in yellow on the screen on the left just disappearing. That's the local station here in Kourou. The uh, data are received by the Russian teams in the launch center, then confirmed before being broadcast. Next up is Jettison, Jettison of the fairing. That's in about 20 seconds. Fairing measures of four meters in diameter stands about 11 meters tall we can get rid of it now in 17 seconds because we no longer need the protection it gives the satellites during their ride through the earth's atmosphere at 100 kilometers up we are out of the dense layers of the atmosphere there's no more friction no more heating which can disturb uh, anything to disturb the satellites and there you see the fairing Jettison. There's another half, which is out of camera range on the port side of the vehicle. This powered phase of Soyuz's first three stages will last about nine minutes. Then the upper composite, called the Fregat, that's the upper stage, with the satellites, will be separated. It takes over and does the rest of the work, completing the mission. Europe's space effort is a three-way affair. Ariane Space marketing and operating the launch services and the Ariane program, the European Space Agency funding new programs, and the French Space Agency CNES overseeing coordination of all space-based operations. Marianne Claire, you heard her here just at the beginning of the broadcast, new director of the space base since uh, a month, roughly, and also the first woman to hold the role. Confirmation de la séparation des deux demi-coiffes. 
The Kness site here, chosen in 1964 because of many advantages, not least among them a large opening on the, on the water. We have 50, 50 kilometers of coastline, which makes possible flying both north and east, north for sun-synchronous orbits like tonight, east for geostationary orbits. Coming up on separation of the second stage, there you see what it looks like on the animation and what it looks like on the onboard camera. 186 kilometers up, and we will have uh, ignition Allumage the e. third stage. The DDU has just called that Préparation out. What unusual aspect of the Soyuz, whereas with Ariane, for example, we separate the lower stage before igniting the upper stage, Soyuz does the opposite. The third La stage is actually ignited two seconds before separation of the second stage. The reason being, the lower part of the third stage, called the skirt, is used to channel the flux of this third stage motor ignition down toward the stage below where it rebounds, giving an added thrust, assisting separation. The third stage skirt is then separated 10 seconds later, and during those 10 seconds, Soyuz climbs 4 kilometers. In an older version of Soyuz, without the frigate upper stage, it's the third stage which put the satellites into its initial Earth orbit. Our next film, and the first on our passengers, coming up on Cosmos SkyMed, second generation. Hi, I'm Véronique Loisel, and I am the program director for Cosmos SkyMed second generation at Ariane Space. My work mainly consists in interfacing with our customer, for all subjects linked to technical matters, but also contractual, communication, financial, insurance, and legal aspects. Our job is to respond at best at our customers' requests. As for Cosmos Skymed second generation, the 2,205 kg main satellite was manufactured by Thales Alenia Space in Italy for the benefit of the Italian Space Agency and the Italian Ministry of Defense. It is a drug system, civil and military, designed to address the requirements of both commercial and government customers, as well as the scientific community. Cosmos came at second generation, will be part of a constellation of two satellites, which aims at providing an enhanced quality of the imaging services to the end customers, with respect to the current CSK constellation. Thales Alenia Space is a very important customer and partner for Ariane Space. Indeed, Cosmos Cayman Second Generation represents the 167 satellite manufactured by the company and to be launched by Ariane Space. It will be also the fourth satellite to be launched for the Italian Space Agency and the ninth for Italy, comprising ASI, Italian MOD and Telespazio. You may have noticed that since the start of the mission, events are announced by the DDA with maybe a slight one, two second delay with the pictures you see on the animation. This is quite normal, nothing to be alarmed about. The information that's telemetry and radar coming into the ground stations, then sent by them here to Jupiter, have to be first confirmed by our Russian teams in Moscow. Then they come to French Guiana at the CVI, which is the Quick Look Telemetry Center, which relays them to the DDO here. So at certain moments, there might be a short time lapse. Nothing abnormal about that. We will be going up to the CVI for a visit later in the broadcast. The Soyuz we're using today, it's the most recent version, the Soyuz 2. Originally, you might recall, Soyuz was a missile called the R-7, the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM, developed in 1953 by Sergei Korolev, who was the father of the Soviet space program. The Soviet R series was modeled on the German V2. On October 4th, 1957, R7 put in orbit Sputnik, you will recall. There's the separation of the third stage. See what that looks like. And with that, we have come to the end of the first part of the powered flight phase. We're now awaiting confirmation of the first frigate burn. Saint Hubert at the top of your screen. That's our next downrange tracking station. It's Extension in du étage et séparation du étage. We're waiting for confirmation of the first frigate burn. There will be seven, remember, 
Some will take place during the break, so we won't see them. We're going to cut away at twice uh, at two moments during the broadcast. We need seven burns because we're launching five satellites, and although all are headed toward a sun-synchronous orbit, each has to go into its own orbit, of course, and its own altitude. And an interesting mix of satellites for this mission, multiple mission tonight, Cosmos SkyMed, Earth Observation, the scientific mission KEOPS for the European Space Agency, and then in the final part of the broadcast, three CubeSats, small ones, Ops, Sat, ISAT, and Angels, will be describing each in turn. There you see, right on time, the first ignition of the frigate burns coming at 470.